today we'll talk about the idea of the sound barrier uh, and the design of transonic and supersonic aircraft and airfoils. Essentially, how we can use the tools we've developed so far to give us an insight into how a high-speed aircraft should be designed. And this discussion today is based on Anderson 11.7 to 11 and 11. So I put sound barrier in quotation marks here because obviously this is no true barrier. We have aircraft that have been flying faster than the speed of sound, so M infinity greater than 1, for over half a century. So let's consider an airfoil at some angle of attack in a wind tunnel. So what we want to look at is how the drag coefficient CD varies with M infinity. So we start off the incompressible drag coefficient, we call that CD naught. Call that point A. And as we increase M infinity, at first nothing much happens, all the way up to the critical Mach number. at C. Now as we go past the critical Mach number, a region of supersonic flow where the Mach number is greater than 1 appears on the airfoil. And this results in a small drag increase. As we go past this critical uh, Mach number and continue to increase M infinity, suddenly there will be a huge drag increase region. Basically, the slope will go up precipitously. We call this the drag divergence Mach number. Now C goes rapidly and we can, and it can go up to even 10 times CD naught. In this region now there are large regions of supersonic flow on both sides of the airfoil terminated by shocks which causes large separations and therefore large drag. So you can start to see why early aeronautical engineers thought there was some kind of a sound barrier. In this region, it looks like the drag is shooting off towards infinity. But in reality, the drag peaks at about Mach 1.0 and then starts to decrease. So this sound barrier can indeed be surmounted, but essentially the question becomes what can we do to reduce the magnitude of the drag in this region? 